Hi, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, we're going to start off with a little reading stuff again. <laughs> so, the biggest problem with deciding to wait to talk about a particular subject is that it becomes all too easy to continue not talking about it. So it wasn't that I didn't want to tell you, it was that I forgot how to. And then, of course, the book happened. His gaze moved towards me. I don't think I came across particularly well in Mother's eyes. Looking back on it, I can understand why, but believe me when I say, I was just trying to protect you. Okay, so I'm going to be trying something a little different with this vlog um, and I'm going to sort of kind of do a little bit of a character study. Um, I specifically want to talk about um, David Zendel, Zell's father, but I may also talk a little bit about uh, Gloria, who is Zell's mother, um, as well. It, it sort of depends very much on, on how this would go from here. I'm kind of um, ad-libbing and sort of doing it as I go. I've not really sort of planned out too much what I want to say, um, but I knew I definitely wanted to start with that particular quote because I feel um, that it definitely sort of sums things up quite well <laughs> um, for like some of the points that I, I kind of want to make and some of the things that I kind of want to talk about. Um, so before we go any further with this, um, spoilers ahead for the Never Aten collection. If you want to be going into the Never Aten collection completely blind, I suggest reading at least one of those books first and then coming back and watching this. Um, I think it doesn't matter which book you, you read, you'll get a fairly good idea of um, a lot of the plot points that are probably going to be covered in this or sort of skirted around in this um, by just reading well. But let's say the colours I see and uh, no doors allowed, a little bit less, a um, little bit less with Hyena Boy. Hyena Boy doesn't, doesn't feature David quite as much, although he does make a brief cameo in that one. Um, and at the point in time that this video is going out, it's just those three which are available in the Never Aten collection. Um, he appears a few times in We Giants as well, um, in a slightly larger cameo than he does get in Hyena Boy. Um, and then in the spin-off books, he has a few cameos in some of those. <laughs> so yeah, he, he's quite um he's quite an important character within the Never Aten collection, even though he is definitely a sort of secondary character. Um, he's, sort of, he's definitely a secondary main character within Zell's story, he's definitely a secondary main character within No Doors Allowed. So, miles spoilers ahead definitely for those two books in the collection, um, so you've been warned. <laughs> okay, so David Samuel Vendel, um, Definitely born, I think, I think in the 40s. I think that's when I worked out he would have had to have been born. Um, he was born to Zena and Henry Zendal. <laughs> um, their only son, their only child. Um, and he lost a couple of family members at a fairly young age, um, including his, his father. Um, so he was primarily raised by his very strong-willed and open-minded mother and um, that's kind of very important to understanding his character is that he did not get a very traditional upbringing for when he was born and when he was alive, especially for the um, economic background he would have come from because he came from a very well-off background. Um, he was, I'm fairly certain he was a boarding school kid. Um, I've not sort of specified that necessarily, but if not boarding school, then definitely grammar school. Um, definitely had a very good education and he became a banker like his father. Um, his father was also fairly, um, open-minded and very uh, 
very worldly in his in his views and in his um, perceptions of the world as well, which meant that for the time that you know he was raising his son, he was teaching his son a lot about you know being tolerant um, of of people who are different and and various things like that. So it's no surprise that going into the sixties, which is when he would have um, come into his adulthood. Uh, Certainly, yeah, he definitely would have needed to come into his adulthood by the 60s because by by his mid 20s he's a father, and his son is born uh is born in 60, 66? yeah 66 because <laughs> it's the year before that's the, technically the year before Jay, but not a year before Jay. Um, so yeah, his, his son is born in 66. Um. So he would have definitely have become an adult um, in in the in the sixties, and I think he would have certainly in the early part of the sixties before becoming becoming father. And during the time he's sort of romancing uh, Gloria, I can very much see him kind of not quite being a hippie, but sort of of that kind of ilk. Um, sort of very much of that kind of um, very open, very experimental um, kind of mindset, um, which fortunately for him was something that Gloria also had. Um, she also sort of came from a similarly well-off sort of background, um, not necessarily as well-off as his background, but definitely very similar sort of background and was not necessarily brought up with the same open-mindedness that he had, but definitely had a similar enough kind of background that her views were very open-minded and very tolerant and very um, accepting, um, which made them a really good match. Um, I don't know a whole lot about you know their dating process, um, I know they weren't married that long before Gloria fell pregnant, um, but they they certainly I, I can very easily see them meeting in you know in in nineteen sixty one nineteen sixty two maybe, um, and and sort of having a little bit of a whirlwind romance um, before deciding to to settle down together, um, and then fatherhood happens. Um, so this is definitely a spoiler. Um, so again, if you don't want to go into the colours I see, any kind of spoilers, um, if you're planning on reading that one before you read Near Doors Aloud, because if you read Near Doors Aloud first, a lot of this will, will already be, uh, will have already come to light. Um, but Gloria was pregnant with twins and unfortunately due to a number of complications went into a went into premature labor and b lost one of the babies and that immediately changed both of these very free-spirited individuals um because suddenly they were hit by this massive tragedy um, and they also were responsible for a child with very high health needs. Um, Zell pretty much struggled for life, uh, certainly for his first couple of years. And that sense of needing to do everything they can to ensure the survival of their, their child, to ensure the survival of their son, very much shapes um, pretty much everything about how they parent him for a long time. Um, it makes it basically he, he sort of becomes the, the center of all their grief and all their anxieties. Um, they don't want to lose another child like like they've already lost a child. They don't want to lose another child. Um, it very weighs very much on them. It sh very much shapes them. Um, it you know, it's hard to say which parent is more obviously affected. They are definitely equally affected. Um, 
there are probably some more obvious signs when it comes to, to Gloria, maybe, than when it comes to David, but as a, as a pair, as a couple, it, you, you can see how much it sort of shapes them. Um, certainly after you reach the point in time in Nicole's I see where it is revealed that Zell should have been a twin, um, you then begin to sort of understand a lot of their earlier behaviour, a lot of the things that they were doing sort of up until that point. Um, but yeah, it's it's this kind of this catalyst. It's kind of this um, a world shaping event for all the two of them. So all of that free spirit, um, all of that energy, all of that enthusiasm, a lot of the humour and joy that they kind of had gets lost in what they feel is this constant struggle to keep their son alive. Um, they are very close as a couple, they are very supportive of each other as a couple, um, so they're kind of fortunate in, in that sense, um, but they are also overprotective to a fault. <laughs> um, which uh, is something that, you know, Zell does kind of rebel against as he sort of gets older and, and stronger and understands his own limitations um, and, and develops this, this mind that, you know, he, he knows, you know, he can't push things and be sort of stupid with it. He has a good survival instinct, but he wants to sort of push those boundaries and understand exactly, you know, what he needs to do in order to keep himself safe um he does kind of constantly but against what his parents think he needs to do in order to stay safe <laughs> um so yeah it's, it's um in in that kind of terms especially sort of before zell finds out the truth um he he is in sort of the situation where he knows he has these really overprotective parents and yes he can understand it because he he understands his own high medical needs um to a really good degree where he's kind of like yeah i get why they're overprotective but he doesn't he, he kind of sees his parents as very strict um very kind of unyielding um in in their decisions about things and it does cause him to feel like he needs to hide things from them that he needs to um go behind their backs um in order to sort of do a lot of things that he, he wants to, to be doing um in order to find himself and to find his own limits and, and to you know figure out what he can and, and can't do without all of these sort of other things kind of coming into play and, and kind of um, and kind of stopping it. Um, the Gloria and, and David, and, and definitely David on, on, on this point more than anything else, um, they slowly kind of start to, I wouldn't necessarily learn the error of their ways, um, but I like to sort of look at them and kind of go, these are good parents, they are flawed parents, but they are good parents because at the end of the day what they want is for their child to be as healthy and happy as possible and yeah okay some of the things that they do are overbearing and maybe unnecessary if you kind of look at it <laughs> in the wrong way or if you look at it from a certain angle but at the end of the day their interest is in making sure that their son survives and that their son lives um and the process kind of forgets to let their son actually live and, and experience a kind of full and well-rounded life. I and mean, unfortunately, Zell is rebellious enough to find those things for himself. Um, but it's it's very much a struggle for them to kind of let go of that overprotectiveness. And their kind of journey as characters is to basically kind of go back to their own roots and to the things that, and the values that they kind of had when they sort of first met each other and sort of became a couple, um, those ideas and those values, um, which kind of allowed them to, to not look at a situation in such a black and white way. And, and as I said, to, to be more open-minded, to be more uh, tolerant and kind of apply that to their own son. 
because you know in in the wake of their grief in the wake of um finding themselves with this very vulnerable you know very sickly child um they kind of lost their way a little bit they didn't sort of turn into people who you know were close-minded and didn't sort of um and, and lost their kind of tolerance that they they did have it was more a case of they didn't know how to uh, apply that way of thinking to the raising of this child who was very certainly in his very early years highly dependent on them for survival sort of you know more so than a, a normal child um would have been and you know he that was, that was lucky to survive and I, I definitely think the only reason he did was through having the kind of parents with that sort of, of dedication but having that sort of dedication and and learning at a certain point you kind of need to take that step back and allow your child to live they struggled with that they very much struggled with that um and part of their struggle with that is that lack of communication so the the quote that i that i just read um very much comes from um a lot a lot of things that sort of went on in the story and a lot of things that um you learn later were being kept from Zell or he found out from from various different ways that were being kept from him um and he he basically reaches a point of well i know you were always going to tell me about this because i I think in particular this is something that his grandmother told him um, that his parents were eventually going to tell him um, so he, he was aware that they were going to sort of talk to him about it at some point and he questions why you know they never reached that point of just telling him naturally why you know in, in all these cases that he sort of found out through other means and that's kind of the response um, and I think that kind of very much sums up the situation that they were in because they became so good at not talking about all these things. They forgot how to talk about all these things. It wasn't that they didn't want to share. It wasn't that they didn't want to let their son in. It's that they forgot how because they put so much focus on all of these other things that they forgot what was most important. Um, so, yeah, they're, as I said, they're very much their journey and their progression definitely through the colours I see and, and into No Doors Allowed as well, although they're, they're already in like a stronger position at the start of No Doors Allowed. <laughs> it is definitely much more than the journey they sort of take as characters um, and definitely you can see it much more clearly with David's character in The Colours I See. Is this progression from parents whose sole motivation, sole, mo sole motivation, <laughs> In their relationship with their son is to ensure their son's survival in eventually kind of becomes okay our son is surviving the type of protection we're offering him needs to change um we need to sort of loosen the reins and let our son live but let him know that we are always going to be a couple of steps behind him you know when he if he needs us um and that's very much the journey they sort of take. And I think it's it's a good journey for parental characters um, to sort of go through. Um, and, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, I started writing uh, writing these characters as very sort of strict parents. Um, and then by the time I sort of finished my first draft of the colours I see, I kind of realised that, yeah, they they are kind of strict parents, definitely early on they're kind of strict parents, but they have reasons to be strict parents. They're not strict parents for the sake of being strict parents. They're, you know, they're parents who are dealing with a lot of unspoken pain and a lot of unspoken grief, and it's only once they kind of start opening up and start talking about it that their relationship with their son becomes less of a battle and more of a relationship. And, you know, there, there are lines and there are quotes that I can, especially from David, <laughs> um, that I can read, which always, whenever I sort of go through or I, or I edit or I read or whatever, always makes me go, David is a fantastic father. He's, he's flawed, he's not perfect, he makes bad decisions, he, you know, but he's trying to do the best that he can with the situation that has been 
presented to him, he is a fantastic father in that he is a very real and very genuine father. He He's not perfect. He's not, you know, a bad person who learns, you know, the errors of his ways. He is just someone who's been through something painful, who needs to learn that, you know, that, that pain, that fear, that grief, yes, it's always going to be there, and yes, it's always going to be a part of him, but if he takes a step back and lives in the moment with the, you know, the son that he has, and um, the situation that he's actually in and not, you know, the one that he fears will happen, then he's going to get so much more out of the experience of fatherhood, and, you know, it's, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't say he's definitely my favourite father character that I've written, but he comes close. <laughs> if he's not, then he's definitely like in the top three. Um, that's you know that's how much I respect David as as a parental figure and as a father character. Um, Gloria doesn't get as much screen time <laughs> as she probably should, so it's always sort of like easier talking about like them as parents from like you know David's side of things. Um, but she definitely goes through a journey of her own. Um, I think it probably highlights more in No Doors Allowed than it does um, in The Colours I See. I think The Colours I See is very much David's journey, um, and No Doors Allowed is very much. Um, Gloria's journey, or at least Gloria's journey, as it is from the point of, you know, having gone through the events of, of the Colors I see and being in a slightly better starting position um, than, than David was at the beginning of the Colors I see. Um, but yeah, I, I would definitely sort of like see it in those sorts of terms where, you know, it, it, they're okay, yeah, these are not focal characters, they're important side characters, they're important secondary characters, but they're not necessarily like main characters um but they go through these journeys um through these two books and they they're journeys that you can follow and you can care about because you know they they are genuine characters they're, they're flawed individuals who don't become perfect but do learn that you know they do learn a lot um and it is kind of interesting sometimes that the journey of the secondary characters are easier to talk about than the journeys of the main characters. <laughs> but in this particular case, I would definitely say it's, it's, it's easier to sort of see the journey that they've gone through and follow the journey they, they sort of go through um, in learning to be the parents that they originally wanted to be before going through such a tragedy. All right, okay, um, I hope you found this sort of interesting. Um, I'm going to be sort of, not every single week in a row, but over like the next couple of months, I'm going to be doing vlogs that are very much like this, where I'm either going to be reading a quote and then talking about a specific character or characters, um, reading a quote and then talking about sort of thematic things, um, or, or something like that. Um, I'm not entirely sure how some of these are going to go, um, but I'm going to expect it's basically <laughs> experimenting with the things that I talked about um, a couple of weeks ago to try and figure out exactly what direction I want to sort of uh, take these things in as sort of like an alternate to my just going to talk about whatever's on the top of my head sort of looks. <laughs> Um, I hope they're going to end up being fairly interesting. Um, I know I sort of babbled a little bit. I'm a very sort of babbly person. Um, I might kind of plan out a little bit more what I'm going to say in some of these. Um, but I kind of like not planning it out. <laughs> planning it out is work and like... I, I do enough work, <laughs> um, but we'll see. I mean, I might try planning out a few where I've got like bullet points um, at the very least of like things that I want to go through and mention, um, just to sort of see how it kind of compares. Um, 
but you know if I can just like freestyle it then I'm just going to freestyle it I mean I'm, I'm often I'm not really thinking about what kind of vlog I'm going to do until I'm like right before I sit down um so it's going to take a lot of discipline to sort of <laughs> be be organized enough to kind of go okay this is this is this is what I'm gonna do this time okay these are my bullet points let's let's look at my bullet points um so yeah, I expect them to be more often than not just kind of freestyle, like I will just think of a quote, find the quote, <laughs> read the quote, <laughs> and then go from there. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Um, so with that said, I hope you're looking forward to whatever I'm going to be doing next time. At this point in time, it could be anything from another one that's a bit like this, to another one that's just talking about general stuff, to whatever, I might be trying to experiment with something else, um, we'll see, I, I literally have no clue at this point, so I'm not even going to pretend like I do, um, so, yeah, see ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!